Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Spring Reporting with Spring Solutions LLC. In this video I wanted to do another uh, kind of show and tell where I'm showing you the funds locator from three different districts and I will go over to that state's website and show you the instruction packet. So if you're interested in working in the state of Arizona, Colorado, or New Mexico, please stay tuned. Please note that I am not an attorney. This information is not indicated as legal advice. This is strictly for research purposes only for unclaimed funds and bankruptcy cases. So as always, we start with a funds locator. This time we're going to start with A for Arizona. I don't believe I've shown you sort of these other southwestern states. So the state of Arizona, and if you're new to my channel, I'm sorry, this is ucf.uscourts.gov. This is the site that you need to go to that houses um, your leads for all of your bankruptcy cases. And the easiest way to do that is you search by court and type, start typing in the state. And then you just click search. And so for the state of Arizona, there are over 34,000 cases where there are unclaimed funds. Um, let's see. If you type or click on, I'm sorry, the amount twice, you'll see that the highest claim in this state or district is 63,636. And then it kind of goes down from there. And we're going to go over to the website of Arizona. And I will show you unclaimed funds. So let me go back to the main page here. And again, this is the US uh, Bankruptcy Court District of Arizona. Their court locations are Phoenix, Tucson, Yuma, Flagstaff, Bullhead. So that's where there's all the court locations. And then if you click right here, unclaimed funds, then here's your instructions on how to fill out the paperwork and the application itself. So let's see what their application looks like. They just use the official form 1340 and they've already filled in a little bit of it here. And then a copy has to be sent to the U.S. Attorney for the District of Arizona, and that's their address. So this is just the official form that most states use, but not all states. If we go back one, we'll show the instructions. And this is similar to most of the other states. It just goes on to tell you about claimants. And representatives, filing it again, tax forms, an order that you have to submit along with your application. And then that order is here. If you go back one again, that order is here. So this is where you need to go for them. And here is a telephone number if you need assistance on recovering the funds. And there's a mailing address to where it needs to be sent to. And this is the IRS form that you need to fill that in. So that is the state of Arizona. And they have a lot in that area, I guess because it covers such a large um, geographical area with all these court locations. So they have a large number of claims. So now we're going to go to the state of Arizona. So let's go back to the funds locator and just click home. And we're going to type C, Colorado pops up here, and search. And they have about 17,219. And let's see what their highest claim is. So there's one, but it's from 1970, and it looks like the creditor is unknown. That's over $200,000. And I suppose if you wanted to get a clearer list, you could probably call the clerk's office and find out who the creditor is, um, what's going on with this case. But it says 7000. I don't know if that's an actual case number or does this mean it's from 1970 
you could probably call and get clarification. Um, but the amounts go down after this big amount here. So that is what the claims look like in Colorado. And if we go over to their state website, they have a live chat for someone that can help you. And we are going to go down. This looks like their court location is in Denver. And I don't see a little button for unclaimed funds, so we just go up here to the search bar engine and click search. And here, here's their information. So you can read on to find out. It just tells you a little bit about why there are unclaimed funds and what the law is. And then here, this is where you click to see the requirements. And down here, this goes to the finance department, the questions. So there is an actual email, which is good. You can always email them. If we click in the instructions, it'll tell us what we need. They give you the clerk's office number, uh, just the documents that you need. It tells you who you need to send a copy to, and here it's the U.S. Attorney for the District of Colorado. It looks like they use the official form because it just says, must file an application for payment of unclaimed funds. So that's just the official form that they use. And this looks similar to uh, the state of Arizona with the claimants and the other things that they need. Here is the where the application goes to, so it goes to the bankruptcy court. I assume just a clerk, and that address is in Denver. And then it goes on with the um, post-filing process, like what to do after the fact. So that is what you have in the District of Colorado. And again, their email is here if you have further questions. And so I'll show you the last state that I wanted to pull, and that is New Mexico. So we'll go back to the funds locator, click home, and type new, here's New Mexico, search. So they have the lowest out of the other, all the other states that we picked. And they have just about 1,300. If we go to amount twice, we see that the largest claim is for $90,000. But it looks like there's miscellaneous creditors, and maybe this case is from 1980. So this looks like it's miscellaneous type things kind of all mashed together. You might be able to get more information from the clerk's office. Maybe they can give you a breakdown of what is there. So that is what you're looking like, what the claims are looking like for New Mexico. If we go to their site, and let's go back to the main... Here's the, the main web page, and it looks like their main courthouse is in Albuquerque. And then there's a general email and telephone number that you have here at the bottom. And become familiar with these. I mean, there's a lot of information on the front of this. It tells you, you know, when it's closed, if there is uh, hearings that can be taken by the phone, you know, with COVID going on. So there's a lot of updated information. And if you go to the search bar engine, unclaimed funds. And so here it goes on to tell you about the information or why it's available. And here is the application. And they used form 1340 again. So all three of these uh, jur jurisdictions appear to use the official form, which is good. And it looks like they have Again, part of it filled in here. You would have to fill in the rest, it's like formula writing. And then down here, again, it has the attorney's, U.S. Attorney's Office for Albuquerque, New Mexico. And then if you go back one, you'll see the instruction packets for this district. And that tells you what you need, who you need to mail it to. So this goes to the financial department. You have to, again, mail a copy to, they, so they break it down and tell you who needs to get what. Mail the entire packet to the clerk's office and mail another packet to the U.S. Attorney's Office at this address. And then it goes on to tell you the requirements that you need, the application itself, 
what kind of claimant you are, so on and so forth. If we go back to this, this is um, actually a gem that I just found on unclaimed funds. It looks like there is a funeral home where there are lots of claimants. So if you click, if you see this on a bankruptcy court website, you could work from here. The trustee and the court has already kind of done their work. This looks like it was kind of a pretty big case um, where a funeral home filed bankruptcy and lots of people filed claims. So click on that report. And here you can see that the the funds total over 63000 So what you could do is go to the ones, I guess, that are not paid out and see which ones you would like to work. This is the, these would be creditors that filed claims. So you could essentially start calling them to see if they want to recover their money. Um, and it has a whole list here. Some of these numbers are low, but there's one here for 3,700. I mean, you could probably find a decent amount. I'm not sure how often they update this. It looks like this was just filed in January. And I see some in red that have been paid out. So you may want to just work from the, this is a gem that I'm showing you right now. Not all states have monster cases like this, but they were generous enough to, I guess, to avoid, you know, people always calling on these um, to put it on their website. And there are 13 pages of claimants where all the money, you know, that they file a claim for is all here. Okay, so you could take this list and print it and work from here. You have the address right here, so you would be able to work that. You would have to double check the claims register and all of that to make and pacer to make sure no one's claimed it. But you could easily just call them and see if they claimed their funds. So you could work that. And then there's another list too. There's a supermarket. It looks like they filed a Chapter 7 and an 11 at different years. So first, Supermarket Inc., this is a chapter 11, A chapter 11 is sort of like a, a super-sized chapter 13 case. And this particular um, court register report is over $200,000. So again, here's a list. They have the name. There is an address and the amount of the unclaimed funds. Now these are lower because I guess this is a supermarket. So you could... Um, Maybe just kind of scroll through and see if there's one that's worth it. Some of these are lower amounts. Some of them are lower than 500, but there's one here that was 2100. It looks like someone already claimed one for 24,000. This is a gem, what I'm showing you here. I usually don't see too many of these. So you guys could start working these, get some of them under your belt, at least for calling people because it's all here. Uh, written out so you can easily see it. So maybe scroll through and see what looks good to you. All right, and then I'll just show you the other one since it's here. So this is the same supermarket, but they filed bankruptcy at different times, and this is the Chapter Seven Trustees Report, and this total sum is one hundred and sixty-eight thousand. So it's all broken down again. These would all be creditors who filed a case or filed a claim in the supermarket's bankruptcy case. So this is a monster. And yeah, these are lower amounts, but I'm sure there's probably a few high ones in there that you may. So you may want to do a few of the lower ones to get your feet wet a little. It doesn't hurt to do if you're just testing it and you want to see. It doesn't hurt to pick like a one that's like five or eight hundred just so you can get your feet wet. I'm just scrolling through and I really don't see anything over like three hundred dollars. But hey, if you do a few of these, then it can all add up quickly, you know? So yeah, this is a pretty good list. It looks like the Crestview may have had higher amounts than the other two. But that's just at a first glance. So this is claims in sort of the Southwest American region. 
I hope that you take a look at these and see if that's something that you would like to work in or this particular area. Uh, I'm just giving you a, an additional update. Please note that the best way to reach me is by email, Spring Porter or Spring Solutions LLC at gmail.com. Spring Solutions LLC at gmail.com. I'm still providing coaching calls, which is now $85 for 40 minutes. Uh, if you want me to review a case for you, I'll do like a case management type thing for you. If you found a lead, it's a flat fee of $200. I've put in, uh, I'm going to put all of that information in the subject line uh, in this video. So thank you for watching and stay tuned.